Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Midweek Mindset. Last week we began a series talking about who God uses. Um, who, who is eligible to be used in the kingdom of heaven? Who, who are people that God can use in his plan? And I gave you the answer at the beginning that it was everyone. And uh, um, last week we began looking at the genealogy of Christ, the family tree, right? If we all go back through our family trees, you'll find there's there may be some sketchy stuff in your family tree, right? Some folks that maybe weren't of the best character, reputation, maybe got involved with some trouble. Um, maybe it's you, <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, I may, maybe I'm the I'm that part in the family tree no one wants to talk about. Uh, but but that happens in family trees. And as we looked at at the genealogy of Christ. Uh, in Matthew last week, the first 17 verses of Matthew, we saw that there were some uh, uh, some women, Gentile women. There was a, a prostitute, uh, others that had been sexually assaulted. That all of that was in that line of Christ, and just showing that everyone um, is eligible to be used in the kingdom of heaven. That that everyone, re you know, nothing nothing keeps us from being able to be used by God, nothing in our past, our, if our sins are forgiven, given as we move forward, God can use anyone. And so this week I wanna look at a little bit different thing. We'll find a second genealogy of Christ in Luke chapter three, beginning in verse 23 down to the end of the chapter through verse 38. And, and if you look at those two uh, genealogies of Christ, the one in Matthew and the one in Luke, you start looking at him and you say, well, wait a minute, part of that is different. Yes, it is. Well, like I said last week, God's word is perfect, and there's no stuff to skip over. There's no extra stuff. Um, it's all there for a reason and for a purpose. And in this difference, if you follow through Matthew that we looked at last week, we see the legal right to the throne passed down to Jesus Christ, the Messiah. We have the um, first man with Adam and the, his sin, and then the covenant made with Abraham that the that all nations would be blessed through him and then in the line of Abraham we find King David and the promise God made to David that that the Messiah would would be in David's line and would set upon the throne of David and as you pass that on down through the way we see this line that is passed through with Joseph the the uh, the earthly um, Father, okay. We know he's not the the uh, uh, Jesus's virgin born, and but but he was the husband of Jesus's mother, Joseph. And through that line is the legal right to the throne of of David. And so God completes all of His promises in that line to Matthew about the legal right uh, to the throne. And when you look and look, and you and we start looking back through this family tree, and and it comes down through that. You say it kind of changes, especially when we get to David. What's the deal? You know, how can you have two different family trees? Well, he's got a mother and he's got a father in this, in these family trees, right? And and from from David, we see the line pass from David to in Matthew from David to Solomon, and it follows the line of kings, right? It goes down um, for Israel to to that throne, and so. In the, in the account from Luke, we find that it goes from David through a different, a different son, through Nathan. Um, as, it, as that breaks down through there, that, uh, that it, and what we find is that there's the bloodline. The bloodline is passed down through, in the genealogy in the book of Luke, um, through Mary. So, so that in putting those together, we have both the, the legal right to the throne and we have the bloodline of David also that brings it all to the throne for Jesus Christ, uh, the Messiah in that. And so interesting and uh, also reminding us that God is perfect in, in all that he does. And so we keep that in mind. You say, well, okay, if you look at Luke in chapter in. Uh, chapter 3 verse 23 it says now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry he was son so it was thought of Joseph the son of Eli and so you say well if that's Mary's lineage how does Joseph get in there well the original language doesn't use the word son there um, and it, it could very well be 
son-in-law, which would make sense if we put that together. Joseph would be the um, the husband of Mary and uh, the son-in-law of Eli and would give. So that bloodline comes through there. And uh, so, so we see that complete uh, in that picture and reminder of of all the characters and the, and the things that are that are in those family trees and yet God pulls it all together in perfection um, in in Jesus Christ and as we look um, you know the, the theme of, of the series is about who God can use and so we will now with kind of seeing that picture of Christ I thought was important and how that line works out even with some of the sin and some of the rascals that were in that line we're going to look at a few of the old testament rascals and we're going to look at some of the folks that that were used in the new testament that, that god can use any of us in his plan uh, when we come to christ and we ask for forgiveness of sins in him and we receive christ as savior we we are usable in god's hands for whatever purpose he has for us so um, we'll get together next week and, and we'll look at some of the other um, other folks that uh, God uses. Have a great day.